Hi, this is Regaline Sabat, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Stacey Denberg. Stacey Denberg is the vice president and co-founder of the Two Degrees Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to impacting stillbirth outcomes in the state of New Jersey. Welcome to the show, Stacey. Thank you, Gigi. I appreciate you having me here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit more about you and where you are from? Sure thing. Um, I'm Stacy Dinberg, and I am from New Jersey. <laughs> I love it. Now, tell us more about your nonprofit organization, the Two Degrees Foundation. Sure thing. So um, in 2014, um, my first pregnancy after a wild ride with infertility, um, ended in a stillbirth, um, 2014. My first daughter, 30, she was born at 36 weeks plus some. And um, unfortunately, um, she was not born alive. Um, I was rocked to my core, as you could probably imagine. It was one of the most devastating times of my life. Um, I suffered with depression and anxiety, and I was so scared. Um, I was in a very, very dark place at my in my life, and I'm one of those people that needs to research and find out more about what had happened and why. Um, and I realized that there really wasn't much out there for stillbirth, and I connected with another lost mom um, by the name of Deb. Uh, VJ Virgia, who had recently uh, established um, a, a legislation here in New Jersey, it was only actually established and signed into um, state um, on January 21st, 2014. And basically what this legislation was, was um, it required the state to establish policies and procedures um, for the dignified and sensitive man management of each stillbirth in consultation with nursing, psychology, and social work professionals. Um, it also required protocols for evaluating fetal death um, for, for research purposes. So I connected with her and I said to her that I was in awe of her strength because she had also had uh, suffered a stillbirth, that I wanted to help her in some way. Um, and she said, well, let's start a nonprofit. And I said, okay. <laughs> um, I did not know anything about nonprofit organizations. Um, I just knew um, that I wanted to help and I wanted to put stillbirth on the map. Um, and that's what we've been doing ever since. Um, we were established to raise funds for stillbirth research um, to support the um, Autumn Joy Stillbirth Research and Dignity Act, to increase stillbirth awareness and education in the state. Um, and to empower expected moms to advocate for themselves and their babies, and then also to provide uh, bereavement support for families that have been affected by stillbirth, and lastly, to advocate for families that have been affected by stillbirth. I love it. What is your why? That I'm sorry? What is your why? That I'm sorry, you're cutting out. We're having a technical issue there. Sorry. Why that keeps you going? Oh, um, you know, I was never able to um, mother my daughter. Um, she was only with us for a short time. Um, I was able to carry her for nine months. Um, and when she was born, there was a, a lack of ability to be her mom. Um, so this starting this organization and helping others is my way of mothering the child that I never got a chance to do that with. Um, I feel like each person that I touch, each person that I help um, just gives my daughter a reason and a purpose for being here and that it wasn't in vain or that it wasn't a short meaningless life, that it was a meaningful life for her, even though it was um, short. <laughs> so um, I would say keeping her memory alive, honoring my daughter, and 
being able to, to mother her. That's what keeps me going. Very inspiring. Now tell us a little bit more about a time in your life where you experienced an aha moment. An aha moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's lots of aha moments. <laughs> um, I would have to say um, about a couple years after my loss, my OBGYN from a subsequent from my subsequent pregnancy had given my telephone number to a mother who had experienced a loss. Um, and I got on the phone with her and she was devastated. She had just lost her child to stillbirth as well. And I was able to comfort her. Um, I was able to give her advice that nobody had given her. Um, I was able to provide her with a support unlike anyone else. We were talking mother to mother, someone who had dealt with the exact same pain that I had I had felt. Um, and that was my aha moment. It, it opened up my eyes and I said to myself, not only am I helping others heal, but this is healing me as well. And I knew that I had to continue to, to speak with more mothers and to educate more people and to share my story with everyone. <laughs> Absolutely inspiring. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? Well, <laughs> um, I've had to learn, obviously, that life can throw some pretty tough curveballs at you. And I think that it's the way that we deal with those curveballs. Um, do we swing and try to hit them? <laughs> um, or do we just let them kind of go past us and wait for the next ball to come? I think that it's really how you handle these situations. Um, for a while, I didn't want to deal with my loss. And I, like I said, was in a very dark, dark place. I suffered from depression and anxiety and um I didn't want to live. I really didn't want to live without my daughter. And it was a scary, scary place. But I realized that that wasn't why I was here. That's not why this happened to me. I wasn't here to sulk. Um, I wanted to create a purpose and make this situation that I had been given positive in some way. <laughs> um, it took a while. It was not easy. <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, but I slowly learned that there is some positivity that did come out of this. And I know many mothers who have had losses um, like this can sit there and say, no, there's no reason. There's no good that can come out of this. Um, but but for me, I, I, I found it. I found it. Um, and I searched hard and long, but I found the good and the good was in helping others. And you are. Thank you, Tracy, for being a guest on the podcast. Now, where can the audience find you? I'm sorry? Where can the audience find you? So you can find um, us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> um, and also on our website, uh, www.thetwodegrees.org. Um, read up about us. Um, we are always looking for funding, obviously. <laughs> um, and um, with the funding, we can help with many things, including um, a recent legislation that we are currently working on that is right now um, in the state of New Jersey. Um, we are trying to establish a stillbirth resource center here in New Jersey. Um, and we are definitely going to need some funding for that. But um, the purpose of the, the resource center um, is, is really to establish um, data collection and house data collection um, used for research um, to create educational opportunities for the public, for um, hospitals and hospital personnel, um, to develop lists of um, bereavement care options and other support after suffering a stillbirth. Um, so, so we are have a lot of um, 
amazing things that this stillbirth center will provide with for families who are, who are going through this. Um, and um, that's what we're working on right now. So definitely check it out. Um, everything is up on our website and make sure you go check us out on social media as well. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Stacy on all of her social media handles and her website. That's the two degrees.org. And that's the number two. Make sure to put that in there. And again, Stacy, thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. You have a blessed day. You too. Thank you.